Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. What's up, adult babies, leather daddies, and big littles? This is Billy Presida, and you're listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Hey, hi, and how are you, everybody? Are big littles, are those a thing? I'm not sure. Uh, big littles. I, I, I'm just assuming it is. It sounds like it would be. I feel like you can just take like any adjective and a noun, put them together, and that's a sexual kink, right? Oh man, you you know about those glassy boots, right? Oh, they 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 get wild, the glassy boots. <laughs> hey everybody, uh, I am your host, Billy Pr- comedian Billy Presida. Welcome to the podcast. We've got a great episode for you this week. Uh, I've got comedian Allison Klemp on the show. It's such a delight. She's so awesome, super funny. Uh, And I can't wait to share with you in a little bit. If you're new to the program, this is the podcast where every week I talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, and love. However, this week's guest, Allison, is uh, not one of my former flames. Uh, She's just a really funny comedian I know in the New York scene, and we're like-minded individuals in some regards. You know, uh, I mean, listen, I, I heard her, you know, you hear her tell one joke about a sex party. I'm like, oh, this is a person I should know. <laughs> we can relate to something. But right now I got a, I got a show date for you, everybody. I got a show August 6th in Connecticut at the Foxwoods Casino. I'm going to be at the, the comedy club called Comics in the Casino. I'm doing a comedy contest on uh, Thursday, August 6th. Really hope you all will come out. You can go to manwhorepod.com slash comedy for ticket info. And you can come out and support your favorite whore. Make sure I don't gamble. If you see me go to a crap stable, just be like, no, n- bad Billy. No, stop it. Tss. Do the do the thing the dog whisperer does. <laughs> now, this past weekend, this this upcoming, this other part, as we all know, is not a, uh, a comedy show I'm going to promote. But I did go to What the Float this past Saturday. And oh, it was fabulous, as it always is. Dancing through the streets in New York City with my headphones on, looking like a weird person, surrounded by 50 other weird people. <laughs> oh, so much fun. So what the float? It's a silent floating dance party. We all wear headphones, listen to the same music, and just follow the leader dancing through the streets of New York City. We do this once a month. And next month, for the August float, yeah, your favorite man whore with a heart of gold is going to be leading the float. Yes. It's my float that night, damn it. And I want you there. If there's any float to come to, it's this one because I am going to be the center of attention for it. No, uh, I'm going to be at the front of the pack leading you through Greenwich Village. So August 15th, I need you there. If you live near New York City, come on out. Come get fancy. Let's get dancy and come do what the float. Um, For information on what it is, how to secure a ticket, Go to whattheflow.at. Yes, that's whattheflow.at. Seattle fan whores, uh, July 31st. What the flow is going to be in you? I'm not going to be there, but you should certainly go. If you live in Seattle and keep hearing me talk about this, I'm like, that sounds awesome. Well, now is your opportunity. Go to the website uh, and, and get yourself a ticket for the July 31st float in Seattle. Uh, thanks everyone for checking in with me. I, uh, as as you heard last week, you know, didn't have the best of weeks. You know, I was a little hazy. I was feeling odd. I'm feeling a little bit better now. Um, at my grandmother's like funeral memorial service last week, and and that kind of fucked me up a little bit. But I'm I'm doing better now, and I appreciate everyone who emailed in, who tweeted. And said nice things. It actually, it really does help. It really does cheer me up. And I do want to read, I don't normally read fan email. Uh, I normally just read like advice questions I get emailed. But this was super nice. Uh, and from a a type of individual, someone with uh, the, the labels I would not normally ascribe to my general fan base. But uh, a, a lovely uh, older gentleman, Eric, from down south emailed me. And it really kind of got me through the day, you know. He wrote, uh, "Hey Billy, I dig your podcast. 
In regards to the Salon.com article, I agree with you that all of us, regardless of our affinity groups, need an army of allies to move our social contract forward to afford each and every one to be human and humane. The dream is obtainable and it is worth every effort. You are awesome, particularly in your awareness and growth journey. Now, I listen to a few podcasts to help fall asleep. My husband, he sleeps in a different city. The sound of certain voices soothe me. And I like your soft key comic style and your unflinching frank examination of your dealings with your sex partners. It's uncommon for guys to do so. I find the show engaging, enlightening, and entertaining. Your light into this young generation gives me hope in how our society is progressing. You keep putting out the podcast. I'll keep listening. Thanks. A black gay 60-year-old fanboy. And I think that's really the only endorsement I, uh, I now ever need. Quote, the man who our podcast helps me fall asleep at night while my life partner sleeps in a different city, said by a 60-year-old gay black man in Missouri. <laughs> so thank you, Eric, for the kind words. Really brightened up my day. And I got another group of people to thank. Yeah, that was a lead-in to the impersonal Patreon thank you roll call. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is the moment. This is that uh, time of the show where I take a few moments to thank everyone who financially supports the Man Whore podcast on Patreon. So I want to thank all my patrons: Ian K, Sophia L, Sarah B, Nelly H, Krista N, Jazz O, Megan N, Jeff C, Dervla, S B, Jennifer C, Sarah S, Lauren A. Oh yeah, it's that Lauren A. Uh, Justin C, Mary G, Madeline B, Dave K, and the presidential nominee representing the fan whore party, Big Lance. Thank you all so much for uh, for being patrons. Really helps me actually, it actually helps me keep the show going, helps me cover costs and such things. And you too can help out. You can support the Man Whore Podcast on Patreon and receive a slew of great rewards. Uh, you can pledge as little as 25 cents per month. I know you have that in your, in your desk drawer or a back pocket by mistake. And you know where that's going to go. It's just going to go behind your bed. And you can cancel any time. To do so, uh, visit patreon.com slash podcast, Or you can go to manwhorepod.com and click the Patreon banner on the side. And while you're over there at manwhorepod.com, don't forget, get on the mailing list. Okay, that's the way you get out any uh, relevant... Up to date man whore podcast news. As um as a lot of you who follow me on Twitter at the Billy Presida, as a lot of you know, I uh I did something kind of wild on Saturday. I uh I got naked in front of a few hundred people in public. Which for my friends, like my friends on Facebook, a lot of them were just like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like something Billy would do. It's <laughs> It, they're not surprised. It's very on brand for me. Yeah, no, I I participated in New York Body Painting Day. Yeah, where um like seventy something artists and like a hundred models, we gathered in a very public place with permits and and uh and we got naked and I allowed some stranger who I'd never met and I let her turn my entire body into a canvas. And I got turned into a piece of art. And some piece of ass, right? No. Um, <clears throat> I mean, if you, if you go on my Twitter, uh, you can see all the pictures of me. Uh, I look kind of cool, man. I look, I look, it's like a tropical setting. I look like every vacation I can't afford to go on, you know, or like some old Italian man's Hawaiian shirt. I looked like that. Like she had these, oh, she had these great palm trees she made on me. And it looked, it looked, it was pretty, it was fucking awesome. It was so cool to see so many bodies. The The event was there to promote body positivity and, and public nudity, body acceptance, art. People were like, how could you legally get naked? I was like, well, if you say because comma art, they have to let you. <laughs> I mean, at least that's the ordinance in New York and they get permits and shit. But it was super cool. I mean, like everyone was there. There's, <clears throat> I mean, you had you had young twenty year olds, you had old dudes in their sixties. There was an old married couple that they were just doing. They got painted together. That was adorable. You had skinny people. You had fat people. You had thick guys. You had guys like me who are they're not fat but not exactly in shape. Uh, <laughs> there were big dicks, small dicks, big tits, small tits, 
fat chicks, skinny chicks. I mean, every everyone was there. There was a girl in a wheelchair. There was a transgender woman who was uh, flaunting it. Very much passing. Had no idea. I didn't even know she she had a penis until a good like couple hours in when I actually looked. And I know she had a cock bigger than mine. <laughs> Super fun. Um, just had a great time. Met a lot of cool people. A lot of like-minded folk will say. S- saw a dude from Hacienda down yonder. We, while we were getting painted, we are facing each other. But we're probably like 50 feet away. And I noticed him because you can't really. He's very distinct facial hair. And I look. And I'm looking at him. And then he starts looking at me. And then we point. And, you. You. Last time I saw you, you were fucking your wife, man. No, oh, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, there were burners, there were artists, there were nudists. And then there were just people trying to knock something off their bucket list. So it was pretty cool. And a lot of people asked me, Billy, man, weren't you afraid? Weren't you afraid of getting a boner? I mean, I'm not afraid of getting a boner. I mean, I thought it was possible that could happen. I'm not scared of it. I mean, why would I be afraid of getting a boner? It'd just be like, oh, yep, that's the thing my body's going to do when I'm turned on. But here's what's interesting. I was getting painted in between two hot, like tight, like, oh, oh, type of bodies. I was, oof. I mean, just really attract, two attractive girls. And I did not get hard once. Oh, I was looking at them. My brain was going, they're super hot. But as I'm getting painted and there's a, you know, right in front of me specifically, there's like 50 people taking pictures or looking tourists. So although I'm looking at these hot naked women getting painted and, and I'm getting painted. So I've got, I've got a woman touching me in a non-sexual manner. I did not get erect once. I mean, I maintained a steady hang. You know, you want to stay impressive looking. So, I mean, like, there's enough blood flow where it's like, oh, well, you get just hang, hang low enough. <laughs> but I didn't get hard. And here's why. It was not a sexual environment. It was a complete, a hundred naked people, a completely desexualized environment. How cool was that? In New York City, there was a, a couple years back, there was a, a lot of hubbub about female toplessness because it, technically in New York since the 80s they it, it was a you couldn't tell a woman she it, 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 the law is that anywhere it's legal for a man to be topless it's legal for a woman to be topless but cops were still arresting women there became a thing and now it's fine i mean now no women aren't getting arrested for being topless to the best of my knowledge in New York City but part of the argument, and the argument that still goes on uh, with breastfeeding, people are mad that women are breastfeeding in public. <clears throat> but people are like, oh my God, like, uh, people are going to be looking and turned on. It's like, back the fuck off. San Francisco does pretty well with it. You're, it's, a, it's legal to be naked in San Francisco so long as you're not being obscene. Obscene being like you're not fucking someone or jerking off somewhere. You can just walk around naked. There's other parts of the country you can do the same thing. But there's still 17 states in this country without explicit allowance for female toplessness. Where women could still potentially be arrested just for like sunbathing nude. Where a man could also be topless. Such laws sexualize a woman's body, which, and again, sometimes a woman's body is sexual. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the environment. It depends on who's looking. Pervs are pervs. Whether the titties are out or in. So it's just bullshit. I mean, like, people say, oh, well, like, the, the nipple, the female nipple is part of sex. It was like, actually, I don't know how you're doing it, but I have a lot of women grabbing and licking and biting my tits. I don't know how you're doing it, but I have a lot of women, like, grabbing and licking and biting my nipples during sex. I'm not even asking for it. They just instinctively go for it. So clearly a man's nipple is pretty sexual, too. A bit sensitive, ladies. Softer, lighter, please. And it doesn't stop at women either. Uh, There's still a law on the books in Tennessee. The state of Tennessee still has a law on the books. Explicitly states that a covered erect penis is indecent exposure. Guys, you can get arrested in Tennessee for having a hard-on in public. 
in your jeans or shorts or sweatpants. It's this whole puritanical viewing of bodies as always sexual. You know when the body got sexual? You know when I got hard? At the after party when we're all still naked at the at this bar that we had a private party for. And the, these, these two women were, were hitting on me. They were very explicitly flirting with me. And then they referenced my body. That's when I got hard. The entire seven hours previous to that, super soft. I mean, if you're so quick to want to cover up women's tits because you're saying, well, men might want to uh, lash out and then go rape the naked women. Really? Because I was just around a shit ton of naked women. I felt no need to rape no one. None of them got raped. There was no incident. So maybe you're the one who doesn't trust yourself around naked women in public. So maybe you need to check your fucking carnal desires and your inability to control yourself before you want to go control others. So maybe back the fuck off and have a little introspection and let the women catch a tan with no tan lines. Because what a lot of people missed out on is like it wasn't all about nudity. It was a lot about art. And it was pretty fucking cool to see. But this week's this week's guest, everybody, is Allison Klemp. Allison Klemp, very funny comedian here in New York City. Um, I know her peripherally. Wanted to get to know her better. I know she does some things I've done. I know she goes, she's been to a couple sex parties. So I said, hey, let's have a chit chat. So she came on the show. She was a delight. I think y'all are going to love her too. And with Allison, uh, by the way, I wanted to address, we talk about rejecting people. And she talk, She early on, she talks about why she doesn't reject people and how sometimes she's worried about the negative reaction she's going to get. I talk about how, well, you should just matter-of-factly reject them, and you can't assume everyone's a shithead. I say that coming from like a somewhat privileged place and whatever, because you know you assume, oh, well, a guy, you can just reject a girl, nothing bad happens. Um, I've rejected three women on the internet recently, and I got fucking yelled at. Someone threatened to call the cops on me. I didn't do anything. They just were having a manic episode. But like, I'm, I'm just saying, women aren't the best at getting rejected either. So I know it may sound like, oh, well, Billy, he just doesn't know. Guys say mean shit. I'd be like, yeah, women say mean shit too. And you know what I did? I blocked her. I blocked all of them. And you can too. So I, I, I felt like I needed to say that before we go into the episode. The episode's super funny. We, we talk about fun. She's got, some, she's got some great stories. So let's get into it with Allison Klemp. So, so I'm with Allison Klemp. Hi. Let's get right into it. Let's do yeah. It. No, no tricking you of a, hey, are we recording? None of that. No. Hey, are we recording? <laughs> you son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm good, man. Let's get into it. Yeah. What's up? What do you want to talk about? I don't know. I, I thought this would be interesting because oh, okay. I don't know you that well. I know you on like a like an acquaintance level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we talk... Friendly acquaintances. Okay. Yeah. Like, you'll shit on other comics to me. And I was like, okay, cool. That, like, that feels nice. That's... <laughs> it's like they feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, but we talk about similar things and we seem to be, like, you know, like-minded people. And... Uh, yeah. I like I like talking to those folks because everyone else thinks I'm weird oh. and creepy. Um, okay. Because of the, you know, the things I talk about on stage and whatnot. They're like, Billy, what's up with all the orgy all shit? All the fucking... Yeah, Billy, why are you having all that sex? I'd be like, I don't know, man. Isn't this? Isn't this what? Uh, isn't aren't we all going to orgies and just like fucking a bunch of people in one night? <laughs> oh, you guys fuck fewer than five people in a night. Okay, whatever. I've never fucked five people in a night, but yeah, me neither. I didn't just. I made that up out of nowhere. <laughs> That's my record. <laughs> That's your record. I feel like you. I've not. I mean, I've done a few orgies, but like, mm-hmm. I feel like you probably do it more often. I think people think that because um, you talk about it all the time. I mean, I do the same like one or two jokes. I'm trying to really tighten. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess they just think. I mean, I've been going for a year. Okay. Um, and it's in the the parties every like two months, so that's like maybe six. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's more than me, but yeah, that's not like crazy. Yeah. If we're talking like parties, I've done like 
gangbang type stuff a mm-hmm. lot more often um, over, you know, since I was like 22. They let white people do that? Yeah, it's really weird. They're really just like moving that color barrier. I'm, That's great. I'm really fighting it. <laughs> I have a dream. Uh, <laughs> I have a dream porn that I want to produce, I guess. Uh, I would love to see like an interracial. Hey, Steven. We're talk- Hi. Hi, Steven. This is a great time to walk in. I would love to see a porn. And if this already exists, then I'm fine with that. I would love to see a porn that's like an interracial harmony gain bane. You know, like not just like black dudes and a white chick or black dudes and an Asian chick, but like multiracial dudes okay. and whatever race chick. Wouldn't that be so beautiful? Like an Indian guy and like an Asian dude and a black dude and a white dude just all coming on one <laughs> ethnically ambiguous lady. Which could or cannot be me. I mean, mean, you. I was just saying, you told me what you were. I was like, I would have guessed neither of those two things. Yeah, I I present (laughs) as ethnically ambiguous, which is helpful for me with like acting and stuff like that. Sure, definitely. (laughs) Uh, You need an investor for that porno? Yeah, you got the money? Uh, We could talk. We could talk. Okay, we'll talk about it. I don't have a lot, but I mean. Right. I mean, how much can it really cost to make a porno? (laughs) I mean, I could probably get the guys cheap. And by cheap, I mean zero. Because I did a porno with... 15 dudes and two chicks and and we all got the guys we got paid nothing so yeah yeah you get paid in exposure <laughs> yeah big, it's exposure. a lot like comedy that way i think i was the only one of those guys who wanted the exposure mm. the rest of them were like we weren't allowed Please to don't show my face yeah and we had to agree that our faces would be shown and all that stuff but none of them like wanted it to get out and i was like no no this could only help my career <laughs> yeah you and i are different in that way yeah i feel like if i ever did a porn which i really don't think i would ever do but if i ever did a porn um i would not want that to get out like at all but you know men and women are different well i was gonna say that's a that's the prime example of like the double standard well i have a father and i have brothers and i know that they use their penises so like i my my <laughs> my nightmare <laughs> is that if i were to do anything that ended up on the internet that my brother would just be like looking for porn one day and would just come across no pun intended my video you know and that would be the worst thing that could ever happen i think that'd be more fun if he doesn't know until like minutes in because like they're doing it and the angles are from like the back (sighs) Mm -hmm. like you can't see the front of your face but when we're getting to the money shot like it it does actually it's actually really artistic movie pans around Mm mm-hmm to the front, and then he's like, "No, no, no!" But it no. comes anyway. And now he's confused. Late. And then we can just never look each other in the face ever again. And therapy is inevitable at that point. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Steve. <laughs> Bye, Stephen. Can I be on the Uh I mean, you're whiter than me. You're my, welcome to. Your people, and my people, can talk. I mean, yeah. I'm retired. I'm um, so yeah. You want to be the white guy? You can be the white guy. No, I'm so done. I'm good. He's out the, the game. Like, um, I gotta be part of this now. I'm so, I don't have to do anything. I would love to like have a porno casting, like put something up on Craigslist or something, and like say that I'm casting a porno and just like bring guy after guy in and just have them like jerk off, and then be like, okay, bye, thank you, we'll be in touch, and then just never. <laughs> you do know you could just have guys come do that. You don't have to like. I know, pretend but I prefer to lie to them. Okay. You know what's that about? I well, I feel like first of all, I feel like if I pretend like it's a casting, then it adds this air of professionalism. You know, because when people want to get cast on something, like if I was just like, "Hey, can you just come jerk off at me?" Like you, <laughs> yeah. But how well many how them. many casting calls have you gone to where it was just one person in the room? I mean, I could bring other people in the room with me. That would not be a hard thing. You're gonna need like another girlfriend and a gay guy to be there to pretend to be casting agents. Yeah, I'm probably like a bigger dude just to like. Well, he could be outside as like security. Sure. Yeah. Or could, or yeah. you could double it up, Frank. You know, there's a there's a big gay dude who can double as security. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it would be hard to get another a few friends together. I have a lot of scumbag friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to trick some strangers into being sexual deviants? Like okay. that would be so. That's right up Gene's Just a- for fun. <laughs> That's right up Gene's alley. He could sit there. He'll watch the guys beat off and then Gene call them faggots. Great. Gene would be great for that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to think. I'll have to keep him in mind. Yeah, I. Uh, I'll just say this because why not? We'll get right into this because it's weird. All right, what's up? Uh, I got into for like a brief period of time, uh-huh. maybe like a month or two. I was really into. Let's just get your whole. All yeah, your I, was, I was. I was. I thought. I swear to God, everyone was gone, and uh, 
And I was like, no, this time I'm not going to text For everyone. For the listener at home, we're recording at <laughs> Billy's house. And as of now, three roommates have come into the room. Well, normally when I record here, I would record in my bedroom. Right. I didn't feel comfortable inviting Allison Klemp, who I'm not that close with, into my bedroom. Oh, we could have recorded in your bedroom. I don't know. I just, also, my, I don't know. My bedroom has like a bunch of women's name on the wall. Like without context, it I looks weird. Yeah, but I don't care. It's right. fine. It's fine. I mean, we're here. It's Everything fine. we're doing is great. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but back to my like deep dark secrets. Yeah, so, deep dark secrets. Come on. Uh, I actually have not. I've told like one, two people this. I've told two people this. Oh shit! So this is, this is really good. Oh my it's god! Really exclusive. Good. Exclusive. Man whore podcast. Man whore exclusive. You heard it here <laughs> first, unless your name is Caitlin or Lee. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I went through this phase where I was going online and I would go on to like Reddit Mm -hmm. and you know, there's like the sexy subreddits and I would post, I would either like sometimes I would post like a couple of pictures, obviously like no face and Mm -hmm. whatever, or I would just start talking to people off of like comments and stuff. And then that would lead to like, I am in basically, um, you know, and kick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Kick. Yes, yeah, so we which like, I didn't know about until Reddit, and I was just like, they were like, "I'll send you pictures on Kick." I was like, "I don't know that." This yeah, like, email. what's your Kick screen? Yeah, exactly. It's just there's like, all these other methods that are way more normal. Yeah, I know, but then they like have your actual information, which you don't necessarily want them to have. I mean, does any does everyone here not have a Craigslist alternative email like I do? No, I I'm the only one. <laughs> don't, but that's smart. Actually, that's really smart. I had that since college. Yeah. I actually now I don't do it anymore because I'm like whatever it's in brand so like I I deleted it and I was like I'll just send it I don't care anymore right but That's in college and right after college I had like a separate like email your, laddie for yeah. your for your porn and your <laughs> stuff and your and all your non normal stuff I did have like a I used to be that like my current email was like for professional stuff and then for like all the other shit but then it all just i'm late i'm too lazy honestly to keep up multiple accounts <laughs> is what it boils down to uh but no so i like got a kick to like start sexting basically with these strangers on the internet and i would find people especially who were like kind of local like long island or new jersey mm-hmm. and so probably real winners and <laughs> i would sex with them but i would tell them things like I would make plans with them kind of like vague plans be like oh yeah I'm gonna come over and like when your girlfriend leaves and I'm gonna fucking go down on you or just like whatever and jerk off and then I would get but I would get I was getting off on the idea of them thinking that I was actually going to see them even though I had absolutely no intention. So you you get off on lying. I I mean, I I stopped doing that, but like, <laughs> it's not like a regular. It's so bad. It's not like that's like my th- go to thing, but like I, def- I definitely did go through like this phase where I was doing that. I mean, like, how old are we when we're when we're doing this? This was like, um, like three year, months ago, a year ago, a year, <laughs> maybe a year and a half. How old are you again? I'm 28. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, this is like maybe a year and a half ago. Um, but then like, and it got a little too real. Like this one guy, I agreed to FaceTime with him and like masturbate and like mm. let him watch me masturbate except that on his end of the screen it was just dark which I guess is fair right, right? whatever uh, I mean sure. not, not fair but expected it's a creepy internet person <laughs> like, what did I think <laughs> and probably honestly it was better for to have the lights <laughs> off because if I had actually seen him I might not I might have just like <laughs> tried up right um but yeah so then and then i got like weirded out because i was like oh he has like my phone number but then i just like blocked him and then i he kept like talking to me and i I was kind of done with it so i just stopped answering all of his messages and blocked him eventually and then at some point sometime later like months later he sent me a facebook message and was kind of like hey remember me and i was like oh God. And like I had already friended him because like, you know, you get like a bunch of Facebook friends and sometimes you just blindly add people. Yeah. Now I'm a little more judicious with like adding people. I make sure that there's a context. Um, so then I, oh no, because he sent me a message before the Facebook message. He sent me like a kick message or something. This is why I started blocking him. That was like, hey, I like your comedy or something about my comedy. Right. And I was like, oh my God, he knows he who found I am. You. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. found me. How did he find me? I don't know. But so then I blocked him. I got scared. And then he sent me the Facebook message and then I got really freaked yeah, out. Yeah, because he's, like, he's getting more and more personal. Did you say, ever tell him like, hey, stop? No, I just blocked him. And then, well, see, see. And then I got really nervous that I <sighs> might get like murdered. And then, and then I started thinking a lot about how like as comedians, 
we are so murderable. <laughs> and this is another, like, I would, I, I would like to write a slasher <laughs> movie. Somebody, like, targets open mic comedians or something. You've got because, a lot of ideas. If, investors, if you want to invest in porno, a slasher know, movie. Let me know, Allison Clamp on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, AllisonClamp at gmail.com. Um, or if you just want to, like, I guess. Find her on Facebook creepy, and send her creepy messages. Yeah, send me creepy messages about um, you, that you know where I am. Because, like, we are constantly posting publicly for anyone to see i will be at this place at this time i will likely be inebriated there will yeah. be no security like, <laughs> i'll be so vulnerable <laughs> i will be alone on stage if you want me come get me like, <laughs> yeah. who's gonna defend me really like <laughs> the bartender probably not were you worried i mean but now why not why not just in early on just tell the dude no no thanks i'm done i'm not interested anymore yeah, I felt like I was like tacitly doing that by just like not responding to any of his messages. No, but that's not a no. That's just a that's yeah, ghosting. That's true. That's true. That's true. I want to be on your. I, I want to be on your side. I want to be anti creepy McCreeper, but he doesn't. You're right. He can just be that. Ho- Some guy. There are guys out there who just they're so hopeful, and they're like, no, no, maybe her phone's broken. No, 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 just kick his not working on their phone anymore. He, they mean, will come up with every scenario yeah. that doesn't involve you shutting him down. That's fair. Just to like keep messaging you. That's true. And I and I have been since then uh, trying to be a little more proactive with saying an actual no. But sometimes also guys get really um, upset when you do yeah. tell them no. They don't take it well. But I mean, that's why we have uh, our creepy PMs. Have you seen yeah. that sub? No. Oh, it's great. It's just a subreddit of screenshots of creepy messages. Oh. So like kick, text, Reddit, Tinder, whatever. Right. Tinder, yeah. Um, it usually just like her, you know, the girl will be like, oh, no, thanks. He'll be like, well, fuck you, whore, slut, skank. And it's like, whoa. Or just like guys just like showing dick pics to 15-year-old girls on yeah. Reddit. Yeah. I mean, I get enough of that on the sidewalk, so I feel like I don't <laughs> also need it on my computer. But yeah, I could have been a little more direct with him. Mm. But you know, moving forward, it's a growth opportunity for me. So growth opportunity. Mm-hmm. No, no more lying. The guys on the internet and uh, saying no before he he creeps out. Does Tinder count as the internet? That's a great question. <laughs> because I do frequently lie to people on Tinder, <laughs> but I never. Like... But Tinder. I think real. it depends I how think... many mutual acquaintances do you have. Oh, z- I then... mean zero. But I mean, we can all agree that like Tinder is a game at this point, right? Like I it's... hate that though. I know it's it's become a game. But I, I hate. No, I'm part of the problem. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> but it's a problem that's like done. Like there's no saving Tinder. Unless yeah. Tinder wants to start throwing in stuff. I, th- I feel like with Tinder, you kind of get out what you put into it. You know? Like if you're a- Was it like basketball practice? You get out of yeah. it what you put into it? Son? <laughs> you know, in in this life, if you want a lot out of Tinder, you got to put a lot into it. Now, if you want to get out there, if you want to work hard and like send genuine messages <laughs> and like non-grainy photographs that actually show your face. <laughs> you know, Michael Jordan, he did swipes, 100 swipes a day. Yeah. Every day. He would swipe. He would get up at early every morning before school, <laughs> and he would swipe a hundred times until he was out. And then he would go to school, and he would focus hard, and then he got out after. He would just go right back to swiping. Swipe it. Keep on swiping. If you want to be the Michael Jordan of Tinder, you just got to <laughs> swipe, swipe, swipe. Okay? But you got to be careful, because you don't want to get that... Uh, you don't want to get into, you don't want to pull anything because yeah, you don't want to pull anything. You don't want to get a carpal tunnel. You don't want to risk your college prospects. Oh my gosh, because college is really when. Oof. All the Tinder scouts start looking at. You. I mean, the amount of times a poor guy has had to uh, get sidelined mm-hmm. because he pulled pulled a tendon. Ugh, it's the worst. Ripped the tendon. It's like there yeah. goes those dreams of Tinder in the big leagues. You know. No. Uh, nice. Just... Hope you majored in something in college. But <laughs> all that fun. <laughs> I don't know. It, Tinder is just. I mean, I don't really use it much at all anymore. Mm-hmm. I go through phases. Like every like two to four months, I might go back on. But I think yeah. it depends on like how busy. I just, I mean, like, I get it. Like, my brother and his wife met on Match.com, and they're, like, my ideal archetype of love. Older brother? Older brother. Okay. Uh, He's six years older. And I, you know, like, if they ever get divorced, then I will never believe in love again. So, (laughs) Craig, if you're listening, like, you need to hang on to that one. Um, But, like, for me, I'm such a physical person. Like, I need to be... Like have that like physical engagement, that chem, that like instant chemistry or whatever or not, you know. But mm. 
Because, like, especially, like, on paper, you know, it's like, oh, you can say, like, oh, I don't want to date anybody who's, like, shorter than 5'7", or, you know, who comes from this background or that background. I feel like it just, like, allows people... Here's what it is. It's laziness. It's laziness, but it also... Like, I mean, sure. Is it great to cruise people while you're sitting on the toilet? Absolutely. (laughs) That is so much fun. But it forces you to put people into these categories of race or religious background or whatever the case may be and decide yes or no on that. So I think it's actually making us a little bit more racist, you know, because if you're like, no, I don't I don't date black guys or whatever the thing is. But like if you maybe just met a black guy and like really hit it off yeah. and it's like, Oh wow, we have this like your chemistry. Like I've never dated a black guy before, but like this guy's really cool. So like, let's check it out. It's that intangible thing where you can't really measure it. It's just like when you're an hour into that first date, you're like, I don't know. You know, the improv is good. And you're mm-hmm. like, no, this is yeah. it's awesome. I never would have expected it. Yeah, absolutely. And the same with like height, like everybody gets so hung up about height on social media, it's dating yeah. apps and all that. But it's like, if the person's cool, like it probably doesn't really matter. You yeah. Know? So uh, it helps a lot of people in a lot of ways because like some people do work in jobs so like they can't meet people mm-hmm. or whatever their situation is. But I feel like you can't like recreate that actual interaction. So definitely know. that's like my, my th- I just also have never had any like real success with dating apps. But I also see I'm not putting that much work into it. Either. Well, it so depends. It like, I mean, what, if are you trying to get dates out of there are you just trying to hook up on it because uh you you i've you know you, you're a sexually liberated woman so it's like you know you could be trying to date dudes you meet at a bookstore but you use tinder to get the bang on yeah i mean kind of neither at the moment but i have tried like i used to, i was on um how about we for a, while, a little while right um and i uh went on a few dates from that that were kind of okay i did i met i met this guy on there who i I did really like, but mm. then I got blackout drunk on our second date in Peter's bed, so <laughs> um, we haven't talked. Really? Yeah. I think I could have given a I could have given him a, a mulligan. Yeah, I was. I really thought he was going to because <laughs> <sighs> I have a bit about this, but like, so um, I Peter's, I woke up in the morning and I was in this apartment. And you know when you wake up in a strange place and you're kind of like, "What's happening? Is this a dream?" Did I get kidnapped? Yeah. And, and, and like, especially you, you're so pint-sized. Like, did I get kidnapped? Really? That's... Serious question. I was very drunk. <laughs> I could have gotten kidnapped. Uh, I fit into many bags. But like, I woke up and the first thing I saw was like a deer head mounted on the wall. So I was very much like, where am I? Because <laughs> like, who in New York City has a deer head mounted on their wall? And I was very confused because I was all alone in this bed. And I was also a little bit wet. And I was like, did I be in this bed? Like, what happened? Where is he? Why am I alone? And... I didn't know what to do. I smell, because I have a history of drunk and bad weddings, um, which I haven't done since this incident. So, How how long ago was this since? How how sober are you from bed wedding? um, (laughs) I am about a, this was December 30th, 2013. Uh So I'm like year and, you bet you're a year and a half. Sober, ish, okay. give or take. I don't thank, thank you for sharing. Thank you, thank you. Where's my chip? <laughs> um, so no, so I, I didn't know what to do, but I because I had to pee, so I was like, well, I probably didn't pee because I have to pee. So like, how much pee could I possibly pee? And so I smelled it, and then it didn't smell like anything. So I was like really confused. I was like, okay, I have to go to the bathroom. So I go out of the bedroom, and my date was asleep on his own couch, which is a really good sign after a date. Oh. And. <laughs> I open up the bedroom into this like fantastic apartment. Found out later we were in these village. Um, but like one bedroom lives alone. The like, nice. Oh man, a, you fucked up a good thing. He had his own washer dryer. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Real good thing. I was like, you have his shit. number. I might date this guy. I might have it somewhere on my phone, <laughs> but I, so I go to the bathroom and I'm peeing and I'm like, what should I do? Do I call Dan Savage for like an emergency call? Like, how do I? <laughs> I was literally like, do I call Dan Savage right now? Because I don't Does he have do. the emergency line where you could get an instant response? I don't know. I can't no. wait till Tuesday, man. I need I know, to this know. This is really important. <laughs> uh, but it's also an issue that you've never really talked about. So. That's, that is true. <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't know what to do. So I just, I left the bathroom and then he was up and he was taking the sheets off of his bed. And he was kind of like, yeah, you should probably go. And I was like, what? I don't even remember what happened. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? And he was like, well... Um, yeah, well, we were hooking up and you got really mean and then you peed my bed. 
So now I just want to do laundry. <laughs> okay. She's covering her face in shame I don't know. right now. <laughs> like, it's just like, what do you, I don't know. I didn't know what to do. Did he ever tell you, like, what did you say to him? That was so mean. No, and I've been dying to know. Do you, like, insult his dick? Like, what would you do? I've been dying to know. Like, I wish I did have his number. Oh, he also worked for Comedy Central, by the way. He oh. Like, he like, advertising or something for Comedy Central. Uh, okay. Oh, you know what? Mm. Now that I think about it, there's a comic, I won't name, but there's a comic who works in like advertising stuff and I know that he's working at Comedy Central right now. I wonder if he knows this guy. I need to oh, I need, need to you need I to do need, some follow up. I need to do some research. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, so You guys need to do your you need to do your own calling someone a couple years later say, "Hey, can you can we come talk about this?" Yeah. On a microphone? Yeah. <laughs> Let's clear some Don't things up. Don't worry about it. Well, my, my, so, so like I left, um, just mortified. And yeah. I, I, and I walked out of the apartment and realized where I was. And I was like, oh man, this would be so great it's if I could date this guy because he's so conveniently located for comedy. <laughs> like I could just like go do shows and then just come Crash, to yeah. my amazing boyfriend's apartment. You know, obviously my priorities are in order. <laughs> um, but and then I just like went to the Dwayne Reed and I bought like all this shit. It was right after thing, uh, Christmas. So there's all this Christmas candy on sale. And I just bought so much. It just was shamey. I bought a package of Oreos and a thing of milk and was just like eating it on the train. Because <laughs> I was just. <laughs> <laughs> on the train? Yeah. You opened up milk on I, the train. I didn't open the milk. This is like a, oh, I was okay. eating like the candy and the cookies. <laughs> Just like, I mean, I, hey, listen, I've been there. I've had rough times and I buy a thing of chocolate covered pretzels yeah. and I can't wait. I'm like, can't. no, this shame needs to take place. Also, right when now. you're just like, you know, when you're like so hungover and you're like shaking and you're like so weak and I'm just like, I need to get something in my. And then it's the worst possible thing I could have put in my body, but like I felt like I deserved it. And I'm like, texting, <laughs> I peed a bed. I earned this. <laughs> I earned this. Is, is it I earned this or is like this is my punishment? I was more like punishment. <laughs> and I was like texting friends. I, was, I remember I texted Evan Jones and I was like, I just peed this guy's bed. And I was like, re- giving him the whole play by play and he's like no i think you can save it and I'm like, okay <laughs> of course he'd say that yeah. he's just like yeah man well, I, was like, I was like i need a man's opinion on the matter <laughs> i was like if a girl did this to you <laughs> well a lot of the feedbacks i pulled a lot of people as to like am i doomed here and i mean everybody's like well i mean at least you didn't shit or throw up <laughs> and i stand by that i feel like peeing is way better than like throwing up because of the smell factor okay there's you know? that, but i don't know i've heard of i've heard of some puke dick stories and uh and there was redemption at the end of them. They got a second chance. Yeah. Like girls who threw up during a blowjob. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've done that. You've done that? Oh, yeah. And you thought that was that's worse than peeing the bed? I mean, throwing up during a blowjob is different because, like, I'm giving you a blowjob. So, like, anything <laughs> I do. Oh. You know? And you it's think like, you should be grateful for this vomit? Um, Yeah, because maybe you shouldn't be trying to fuck my mouth so hard and I wouldn't be throwing up on your dick, you know? Like, don't push on the back of my head and we won't have a vomit situation, you know? So, like, that's on you a little mm-hmm. bit, I feel like, uh, if you're being an asshole about the blowjob. But, like, if I were to, like, if I, instead of, like, peeing in his Why bed, do you continue, sorry to interrupt, yeah. like, why do you, okay, when a guy is being an asshole during a blowjob, why do you complete the blow? I can't, you know, with my male privilege, I can't answer mm-hmm. these questions. Um, what, why, why do you finish the blow? Why not just stop? Be like, you're a dick. You're acting like one. I'm not going to finish blowing you. Because like society. <laughs> That's a terrible answer. <laughs> like rape culture. <laughs> no, you can't hide behind buzzwords. <laughs> no, I want answers. Mansplaining and... <laughs> No, mansplaining is actually my job. That's the one thing y'all can't take back. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm just spewing my feminology. I mean, li- oh, listen, I just got yelled at for not having enough feminology, apparently. Uh, I got yelled at for, I basically got trashed, um, not because I'm not doing the, uh, the right things in regards to gender equality, but because I wouldn't use the vocab. That was her big problem. Okay. I was like, really? She sounds like a delight. Ugh, Jenny Kuttner, Salon. I was like, really? <laughs> Really? Not to name names or anything. Yeah, no, no. They, I've been very vocal about Look this. her up, tweeted her, tell you Billy Presida says, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of a little bit, yeah, guys. Uh, she doesn't respond to tweets. Okay, well, that's... I mean, what my people have said have been way tamer to me than when, like, Dave Smith had me go on Legion of Skanks because mm-hmm. he wanted to talk about it, but what he doesn't... Like, I've known him, but he, we don't know each other well enough. That, he probably didn't realize that... Um, 
I I don't get angry. I just get sad. So I didn't. I wasn't gonna go on and just be like, yeah, fuck this bitch, fuck this feminist shit. I'm switching sides. And I was like, yeah, you know, it sucks that this happened, but uh, you know, I still fight the patriarchy. I guess the <laughs> feminist. The we'll get back to the puke dick in a second. Yeah. But the feminist rage thing makes me really upset because I, it's it's like Christianity to me in that there's a lot of different types of people mm-hmm. all flying the same feminist flag who don't necessarily have coinciding uh, belief systems. Like, so they, we all have the same end, but the means are just so different. Yeah, and it's like, so, you know, like, the nun who runs the homeless shelter or whatever is a Christian, but so are the Westboro Baptist Church who right. picket funerals. So, like... They both consider themselves Christian. Whether or not they actually both are is up to interpretation, I sure. guess. But like, it's I feel like that's the same kind of concept of feminism. Like, there's a lot of, and I'm I'm really trying not to like speak ill of other women, but like just generally. I mean, speaking. you can speak ill of ill women. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it just because you speak, like I speak. I don't even speak ill of Jenny Kuttner as a whole. I like her writing. I just think she did a bad job on a particular thing. Right. Like if somebody's being an asshole, they should be called out for being an asshole. Yes. It's just like, but, but like it doesn't mean you're calling all the women an yeah, asshole. Yeah, and like there's just all these women who, you know, be like, oh, oh it's feminism. I'm like, well, no, you're not. That's like, it's not the problem necessarily that like a guy spread his legs open on the subway. Like let's <laughs> maybe focus on like actual issues. And when you, these women probably, I'm guessing like what your situation was, I don't really know much yeah. about it. They make it bad for the rest of us. You it, know? Yeah, it causes infighting. And I think that holds back movements more than the actual opposition. Mm-hmm. Because, like, we're, we're, I was like, stop fighting me if you agree we're on the same team. Let's go fight the actual people. Yeah. It's like the Democratic Party. It's a mess. Yeah. We're, I mean, all, fucking all the politics. I mean, there, how many are we? 17, 18 Republican uh, primary? Yeah, but people? it's early. You know, it's fine. President Trump, 2016, will be great. <laughs> we're going to be great. I want him to get the nomination just because I Because would- you know he'd lose. Of course, and it's yeah. how hilarious would that be? Or unless, unless, watch this twist, the libertarian dude actually pumps up a little bit and takes away from the Democrat. Trump wins in a freak thing, and now we're all fucked and we have to wear wigs. It's going to be the first legislation. Because he will not live in a country where he doesn't have the best hair. If he ran shit, he'd be like, no one's making fucking jokes about my haircut ever again. How is he not? He has all this money, and how does he not <laughs> get fucking hair plugs? Like, <laughs> the hair plug technology has really grown in the last few years. I've known plenty of guys who've gotten them, and their hair looks great. Like, how is this not happening? Yeah, he drinks unicorn blood, probably, or something <laughs> gross. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah ba- so- back to feminism infighting. Oh, are we still? Okay. I don't know. I was going to go back to dick puking, if that's. No? Do you have a preference? I'm um, so over. I don't want to talk about the feminist stuff okay. just because I'm so tired of talking about it. I feel like I'm constantly having to like defend myself as a woman, both to my both to other women and to men. Like there was one night where I ha- I would I, say like you can assume that you're talking to people who are like fairly on the same team. Yeah, right I mean, now? for the yeah. most part, it's like for the most part, it's fine. But then every now and then, like I'll get the some like men's. Or, I had to. I went on this. Uh, radio internet radio show uh-huh. i don't even know what it was it was called crotch shot radio don't look it up sounds uh sounds promising yeah it was great it was like <laughs> it's like this men's rights activist idiot who was honestly couldn't under honestly believe that men are oppressed in today's society because any woman can just launch a fake rape allegation against a man and ruin his life mm-hmm. um and I was kind of like, I'm sorry that that happened to you, but, and like, yes, that is, but I'm like, the women who do that are just as uh, hurtful to other women, like more, in fact, they're more hurtful to other women than rapists, you know, because they're just making it so much harder for women who actually get raped to yeah. get taken seriously when they get raped. So I was like, you know, I'm sorry that that happened, but like, I don't think that's like women oppressing men. That's just like, no. Peep, it's individuals being shitty to other individuals. Yeah. It's not an ism, but ugh, I mean whatever. the the them are a guys like the big thing is like they have they have some points. I they have some actual good points, but they're such assholes about it. Like yeah. it's like no nah, man, now we can't listen to you because your arguments are faulty and you're just being a jerk and yelling. Yeah, stop writing in all caps. Uh, go back to your rhetoric and then. And you can say the same thing for some women who call themselves feminists. And like I mean, in, on any issue. Either extreme is probably wrong mm. because when you get to those like extremes 
on any side. Like I feel like it all just like you made it back in the middle if you go too extreme, mm-hmm. you know. But um, back to puke dick. Back to the puke dick. Back to the puke dick. Why would you keep <laughs> doing it? Well, you know, partially to. I mean, sometimes it's not necessarily their fault you know mm. also like i've learned like i'm like okay i can't like eat, eat. it's like swimming you cannot eat <laughs> too soon before a blowjob because oh, you, really yeah. is that a thing that's a thing for me i mean okay. I, i'm not gonna speak for all women but i have <laughs> learned that like if i've eaten too soon like and like i just I'm like, oh no that's gonna and then so usually because it's like tickling yeah it just hits the gag in. reflex uh. you know and i mean like listen i've stuck my finger down my throat a few times i was never like bulimic but you know sometimes you just got to get it out of there okay and so it's like like that little like flap in the back of your throat yeah. that normally holds the food down like you know depending on the dick or the style of blowjob whatever like it'll just hit that and sometimes it'll just a lot of times <laughs> it's just like like it'll either like kind of come up a little bit or it'll like you know they like, kind of like just like swallow your puke back down. Also, yeah. a lot of times you know you're drunk <laughs> when this is happening, so you like multiple factors. Like maybe you were like already gonna throw up anyway because you're drunk, and then now there's a dick and you're like poking your throat. So you're like, oh, okay, my trach is very confused, you know. Um, so you know it's not always their fault. I remember the first time it happened, it was with a guy that I was like in a long term relationship with, and I was mortified. Like when mm. I actually like I couldn't save it, and then I actually just like threw up on his dick and it was so mortifying and he was very cool about it and you know he just like went and that's a good s- that's sign of good dude yeah he was a good dude he's a good yeah. dude um we didn't work out but he's a good dude but that type of stuff i'm surprised like i so i've pulled a similar not to be like hey guys look at me i'm a good guy but mm-hmm. like i i did something similar and someone's like oh my god i'm so surprised you're being so cool about it. i'm like what like like is that not the norm like why would i get mad at someone you can't control yeah because i mean a lot of guys are assholes but uh, the second time it happened, it was I was back. It was when I was living in Colorado um, in Breckenridge, mm. and Breckenridge is like a ski town with about like three thousand year-round residents. Mm. But then at the height of tourist season, it can become a thirty thousand population town. So, okay. uh, and I I like sold weed like very lightly. Like I basically sold weed just so that I could smoke weed for free. <laughs> okay. And 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 this was before it was legal, but it's just it was so prevalent everywhere. And, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. But my boyfriend at the time um, was a bartender also. at So, like, sometimes he would be like, hey, these people are looking for weed. And I'm like, cool. And I would come down to the bar and I would sell them weed and whatever. So I met these guys at a bar and they were visiting. And the great thing about tourists is that you could always just, like, jack the prices yeah. up. Because, um, you know, very supply and demand. Like, I was getting, like, $35 eighths, basically. I, I don't. Oh, you don't smoke f- weed? I don't. Really, I don't know. The, I've never paid for my weed. Okay. So uh, I have no frame of reference. It's Thirty-five dollars. Standard, a lot. like a standard price for like an eighth of weed is like fifty dollars. Okay. So because there's so there was so much weed being grown in Colorado that you could just get like it for so cheap and it's really good quality. But then tourists come to town and then you just like jack the prices up. Mm. So that's none of that is important information. Um, <laughs> but I would. I went back to this like tourist apartment or hotel room to mm. give him weed. And then we ended up hooking up because whatever. And <laughs> because whatever. Because why not? He was kind of hot. And Did you still charge him for the weed? Yeah. Good girl. Yeah, hey. I'm, a, I'm a businesswoman. Good job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bartering transaction. <laughs> this is a bonus. <laughs> so I was going down on Wait, wait. So wait, yeah. wait for the $35 you get weed or $50, whatever it is. Yeah. He gets weed and, and a, and a blowjob? The blowjob's not included. Not included? No. Keep I mean, telling it, yourself that. It wasn't. <laughs> you know, he thought he's think he still thinks that way right now. He's probably. like, "Yo, man, this one time in Colorado, I got this sweet deal." Well, <laughs> but then she threw up on my dick. <laughs> so it, he was being a dick. He was like pushing on my head, and, like I was not enjoying the yeah. blowjob, and um, and like I could feel the vomit like starting to happen, and I was like, "I'm just gonna let this happen." Like, didn't <laughs> <laughs> like I prob- maybe could have swallowed it back down, but I was like, "Why, why am I gonna go out of my way for this guy?" So I threw yeah. up on his dick, and then I just left. I was like, oh, <laughs> "Sorry, <laughs> bye, have a good night." <laughs> and then I got thrown up on once. Uh, have you ever been thrown up on? Wait, he threw up on you? No, on a different occasion, I was thrown up on. Yeah, right. but I'm saying a guy is thrown up on you. Yeah. Because I've never been thrown up on. Have you th- ever thrown up on somebody? No. 
I've peed on people, but not sexually. But like on purpose or on accident? No, well, like you know how you said you drunkenly wet the bed? Yeah. Like freshman year of college, I would drunk, like when if I was drunk, I would wake up in the middle of the night and go pee on something or someone. Oh, so yeah. So I peed on a, I peed on my freshman year roommate. Nice. Uh, this is this is first semester. That's so. very common. <laughs> That's very common. Men will like kind of sleepwalk, especially when they're drunk, and you just kind of like, uh, it's, it's a common story like, oh, I opened the closet door and I started peeing, so I thought it was the right. bathroom. Um, whenever I tell the pee jokes on stage, inevitably somebody will come up to me with some sort of pee story. All right. Um, so it's kind of nice. Okay. You know, we're all, no one's that crazy. And the weirdest thing you've ever done is probably not that weird. But you got thrown up on. I got thrown up on. He was very drunk. I was having a party at my parents' house in Colorado. Um, hold, on, hold on one sec. We'll just, we'll wait. We'll pause. Hey, uh, how long that? How long is that gonna be? You think? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we're back. And we're back. Uh, now we have the the Quick aroma of, of bacon. <laughs> I know that was kind of mean, actually, to just cook bacon. They have like a veggie bacon that Ugh. smells exactly like regular bacon, but tastes like vomit. Tastes like garbage. But if you <laughs> want that smell <laughs> you just hang it around the room you just want to like, be reminded of bacon <laughs> it's good <laughs> yeah um before we started actually i'd ask you so like what's your relationship mm-hmm. sitch and you were like eh, i got a thing yeah I got, I got this dude that i fuck in chicago um who you know he's a he's a great whenever it's funny because his <laughs> he, okay <laughs> his roommate has a podcast Real, I mean, guys, seriously, who doesn't have who a doesn't podcast? Who doesn't have a podcast? But so his roommate <laughs> has a podcast that he goes on from time to time. And so what I was doing, especially at like sort of the beginning of, of whatever this is that we're doing. Now we've, we've, we've concluded that we're in an open, long distance relationship. So that's, okay. that's a fair uh, assessment. But before it was like really like, what are we doing? Uh, I would go on the podcast and or I would listen to the podcast and I would listen for clues. Of like, who he's, who's he fucking? Or just like, because... <laughs> I think to fuck with him, the roommate would be like, so, Tim, what's going on with you? What's your love life like? Or, like, has, or, he'd, be like, or he'd be like, oh, yeah, Tim's got a girlfriend. <laughs> and, like, and Tim would be like, oh, she's a nice lady. Yeah. Or well, it's like last time I saw you on a, on a microphone, on a, at a mic, I saw, you know, you were saying how you've been through like a, through like a, a celibacy string. Or, um, you said you were going through some sort of dry spell. Bef- and this, I mean, leading up to your yeah, fucking sex party. I don't, party. I don't, I don't know if you were doing that to I cool down or what. I don't think I use the term dry spell. But yes, I have not been, I have, I've been, I've been trying to not fuck. So like, I'm, I'm a very sexual person. And for so yeah. much of my adult life, all of, I, I'm, I can very male in this way that like so much of my life choices and decisions are like driven by like, oh, I'm going to fuck <laughs> <laughs> my dick wet. <laughs> get my lady dick wet. <laughs> and it's just been very free. And like since kind of I've started dating this guy, uh, because I'm like emotionally attached to him and mm-hmm. mentally attached to him, my sexual drive has gone down tremendously, ah. uh, which I'm grateful for just like kind of a little bit for the break of like that distract. Cause I always get distracted by boys, you know? Ugh. And so I'm very grateful to just like in this moment, at least not be like totally, mm-hmm like distracted and can just kind of focus on me. Which is so you big. never found clarity. Cause I was about to ask like, do you have any tips? Cause like, uh, oh. I get not clear sometimes. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Fall in love with somebody who lives a thousand miles away and then you'll be great. Um, I'm, yes. I'm going to fall in love with people who are emotionally a thousand miles away, but they're, um, actually just they're right two, they're two stops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I've had that too. That's who I normally fall for. Yeah. And they're like, why? I know you're home because you're online. And it says web on Facebook, not mobile. So I know that you're on your computer at least, but you're probably home because I know you want to take your computer out with you. Uh, No, I'm not stalking. Are you not aware Facebook has read receipts? I know you read this. Oh, that's the worst. That's so fucking terrible. It's just they're like, I've, I've sent messages saying, you're aware that Facebook sends read receipts, right? So I can know when you've read this. And then I can see that they've read that and I still get nothing. Yeah, people love getting messages like that. That's not. I mean, that was at. That's at the end of. You uh, know, you know, I can see. Right. That's at the end of like being ignored. Right. Uh, instead of you know getting uh, some more no, forthright. What is the best way? Ooh, okay. Because this is something that I do struggle. With. What is the best way to get rejected? Do you think? 
to just be told no. Yeah. Or no thank you if you're like a polite. Like if you um, like let's say maybe like oh maybe there was some flirtation or maybe we hooked up once but like Sure. Not and he's really, like hey do you want to hook up again? But hey like, do you want to really go out? But not really feeling it anymore. <clears throat> you say yeah I'm just okay if you've already hooked up. Yeah. I'm not really feeling it anymore or mm-hmm. I'm just really not into it but thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh if nothing's ever occurred or if you gave him your number at a bar and even even if you thought maybe you'd want to, and then you're like, you know what? No, he had, you know, whatever. It was, mm-hmm. Said something weird about his mother I didn't like. Then you can say like, uh, no no thanks. I'm actually, I'm not that interested. No thanks. But now, and, and inevitably, yeah, there's a ton of shithead dudes and a lot of them are still going to react mm-hmm. in a negative way. However, you're now in the clear. That's true. You have now I did done the right all thing. the right things. Did the polite deference and said right. no thank you. Thank you, but no thank you. I think the last thing I would I would have to ask is uh is the, is one of the first things that like I recognized in whenever I met you because I think the I think the first time I met you is at Mike and then you went up and talked about sex parties or oh no um it was at the um, the the uh, abortion clinic was that the first time you met that was the first time we met interesting we both volunteered I had seen <coughs> you on the Naked Show but I guess we didn't meet that no we didn't meet okay I I, I met you at the at the uh, abortion clinic joint um. <laughs> Where we're, I guess we're volunteering, but really we just stood it was, outside. It was really just like the lamest abortion protest ever. It was so sad. I was so disappointed. I was like prepared. We went out to this abortion clinic in Jamaica, Queens, <laughs> and it was very far away and it, very early in the morning. And I was like, yeah, I'm like ready, man. I'm going to take these guys down. Get in like, my face. I dare yeah, you. Yeah. And I, I was like all prepared to have to like shield these poor, not, I mean, poor you know these <laughs> tr- women <laughs> these, <laughs> these women who are going in to suck out a baby suck a bo- like a, you're like you're scared of using words <laughs> and then you just give up and say suck out a baby <laughs> but can i be safe um, Fuck i don't it. want to call them poor <laughs> <laughs> i feel so bad about that i mean listen we're in jamaica queens okay <laughs> it's, you're really poor. it's a, there are some poor women financially challenged financially but, challenged you know or maybe you're going out there so no one will recognize you whatever your reasons are um you know i was like expecting that they were gonna like be throwing eggs or something at these women who were just trying to like live their lives right and uh it was much less violent than mm-hmm. i was hoping for i was really yeah but yes we met um at the lamest abortion protest ever and uh and and then on the way back we're waiting at the train mm-hmm. and i forget if it was like you had just been to a sex party or if i was about to go to one but uh, that topic came up on the mm-hmm. subway platform mm-hmm. for whatever reason Yeah, with strangers. And uh, I was like, okay, this is a person who goes to things that I sometimes go to. Yeah. So, cool. I had, I had, I think that was when I had gone to my first one. What, do you remember what time of year that was? That was like winter, right? It was cold. It was winter. Yeah, it was, it was cold. definitely cold. I, so I got introduced, I had, so I've been to a chemistry party. And okay. Have you done those? Uh, I applied once, but didn't go. Oh. I went once, um, also with a comic who I, I won't name. But okay. yeah, he was kind of like, oh, I have a ticket to this thing. But like, I need a girl. Like, can you come with me? And if this offends you, then like, just forget that I ever even asked. But like, if you want to, you can just totally ditch me when they're in there, when we're in there, like whatever. Oh, that's pretty cool of them. Yeah. And I was like, sure. Yeah. And I was like, absolutely. I'm down to go check that out. Like, that's bizarre and i have to say yes to this opportunity so we go and it's just like a giant warehouse you know in brooklyn and it's like there's like a bar and there's like an area of of food that nobody's near and they have like a burlesque show Mm -hmm. and then you know there's like these two like playrooms that are just mattresses mattresses. yeah yeah and um you know eventually it devolves into like caligula and everybody's just like (laughs) fucking and you're going to this playroom and it's just you know this giant room of just mattresses and just like people just fucking like i don't even think they're i think all the mattresses are even full and it's like at that point it was like so much that it was like desensitizing and i didn't even feel sexy like i was like i mean i feel like i'm at a zoo i am i i feel so relieved to hear someone say that. They're so, they're not, it's not sexy. And you all, it's like human and you can just like smell cum ever and it's like you just hear balls slapping. Right. It's just like not. Like I'll, I'll see stuff and it's not that I don't think it's sexy. Like I'm, my brain is going, that's hot, but. It's just too much. Like I'm not walking around with hard ons. It's too much. And I'm, and I'm feeling like, am I, like, should I be hard? Like I should be turned on, but like I'm, my head says that, um, you know, two girls blowing that dude, that's supposed to be hot, but my, nothing's reacting. Because there's like two girls blowing a dude like every three feet, and it's just like, 
what is that? Why are we mass producing right. these sexual experiences? Um, I mean, like, and he like he felt very uncomfortable. I think very early on. Had he um, never been before? He had never been before. To anything I, like that? or No. And he didn't express this to me directly, but I inferred that for him it was kind of this like, oh, this would maybe be an interesting thing and like maybe a thing that I've been intrigued by or jerked off to and want to check it out. And then you get there, you're like, oh, this is not my thing. I right. thought this might be my thing, but this is not my thing. And so because he was so anxious about it, it kind of like bled onto me. And I also didn't feel very like, I wasn't going to be like, okay, bye. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> See what these bodies are doing. And I had also just come from, I had just done a show in the Bronx where a man like literally grabbed me while I was on stage. So I was like very shaken. Okay. Um, so I was Shit. like, it was in a weird mind place. Um, so he like, we like fooled around a little bit. We were like on one of the mattresses and he was like fingering me. And then this other guy comes over and he goes, uh, excuse me, I just have to get my shoes. And like his flip flops were behind my head, which like really many were in flip flops at the sex party. It's a <laughs> rookie mistake. If I've ever seen um, <laughs> But yeah, and then we went back to his apartment and had awkward sex and never spoke of it again. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was like my first experience. And then I went to, Caitlin invited me to the Waldorf Astoria for like these parties. Does that one have like a name or is it just the party? Not that I know of. It's okay. just, it's like this guy. But um, so I got invited and like I knew that she had gone and they had had a big party the night before that I had not gone to. And she was like, just come, we'll hang out. Like, she's like, there's going to be a masseuse there. You just come and get a massage and like leave. That's what I'm going to do. And I was like, okay. So I go and I can meet a couple people. And it was like, Caitlin and I were like the only girls there. Mm. Um, really? Wait, really? I mean, this was not like a party specifically. Okay. It was just like post party, like the day after. Massages. And like some people were hanging out. It was like much more casual. It was like very, just, people were just kind of hanging out. Okay. And there was a masseuse there who's like kind of like the regular masseuse. And so Kayla got a massage, and then I and she had to leave to go to a set, and then I got a massage, which was a happy ending massage. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, <laughs> for years, women have wondered: is it possible for oh. a woman to get a happy ending massage? And the answer is yes. Oh it's, yeah, they're around. Yeah, you yeah. can find them in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it helps if you're in a private room in the Waldorf. Yeah, room. that obviously <laughs> yeah. helps it. But I mean, you can definitely. I've you know, you read the articles, and there are ads out there for the. The yeah. guy who's going to do the little diddle at mm -hmm, the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very full service. I'll say yeah. that. Um, well, you've been going to the sex party since. So something clicked for you, I guess. Yeah. Well, so I got the massage. And then, I mean, it wasn't really a party because then it was just like right. me. And like, and in that time, another woman had shown up. And then like three or four guys. But I met them and like the guy who organized it. And so I was like, okay. And then I came back. Oh, I, it was, was St. Patrick's Day. Mm. Uh, it was when I participated in my first orgy really and they had me and caitlin come and perform stand-up as like hmm. the pre-orgy entertainment right <laughs> which was very bizarre and i had to like go sit. i was like i need a minute because i was like running around the city all day and I, was, like, I just need a minute to like clear my head i just need to go somewhere to be alone so i'd like go and sit in the closet and like hide in the closet just to, like <laughs> gather my thoughts before doing stand-up for this yeah. orgy in a hotel room and this one girl who had just gotten a massage like opens the door and she's like beautiful like black woman um, she's oh, I'm sorry. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. But I think everybody was like, is she freaking out right now? Like, <laughs> she just like got here and went straight to the closet. Like, is she like <laughs> terrified? This poor girl is what I assume people thought. Um, but yeah, so we performed and then uh, and then it was kind of like, so are we sticking around? And then yeah. we're just going to hang around talking. And then it, and eventually we looked around and realized, like, oh, we're the only people with our clothes on, which... Like it's mortifying. It's a mortifying idea to be like the naked person, mm -hmm. but I feel it's just as uncomfortable to be the only clothed person in a room of naked people. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I was just like, I feel very uncomfortable right now with all these clothes on. I guess we should at least get down to our underwear, and then from you know, one thing led to another. And then you know, and then there's a cuddle pile of five people. Yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> then that that happened, and then I dug it, and uh, and then I did another one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my, mm. my orange experience. Is that, so is that something like, uh, that's for you? Um, I mean, I've enjoyed it. It's, uh, I would do it again. It's a great, cause like I said, like I haven't really been like going out and seeking dues, but like I still have needs. Mm. So it's kind of but like things get thrown at you. Things get thrown at you. <laughs> and then, but so it's like, it's kind of like, oh, okay. I can just like get all of my sexual energy out mm. in one burst at the sex party and then kind of like chill after for a little bit so that's that's just kind of how it's been recently all right but you know i'm open to things things questionable stuff 
items, yeah. activities. Yeah. Try it all. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Try it all twice. Yeah, once. You know? <laughs> um, Allison, where can uh, people find you? Uh, you can find me starting July 23rd on Music Choice Network. My show, Questionable Choices, mm -hmm. will start airing. So please What watch is that? that. My, my uh, uh, super funny comedians, all people I've known for a long time, mm -hmm. Sue Bagua and, and, and Andre, Thompson Callis, and Andre Thompson and Nick Callis, all funny people. So that's yeah. on the Music Choice Network? Music Choice Network. Um, you can. And what is it? It's um, it's kind of like a girl code, like it's a talking head type show, okay. where we sort of just go through the, kind of the questionable, questionable choices, choices that we all yeah, make in okay. our day to day life. <laughs> you know, whether it's accidentally sexing your dad or <laughs> you know, um, posting something on social media about your job that maybe you shouldn't have. And tell know. me, the dad thing was you or Suba? I mean, I have done that. You've done that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on Twitter, you're at. At Allison Clamp. At Allison Clamp. Yeah. That's one L and one S. Mm -hmm. It's okay. one of everything. A L I S O N. That's all, right. all you need. Clamp like for clamped. Okay. W clamp like what? For clamped. Like know. I'm getting a little for clamped. I don't know that word. What? I get very intimidated when I start hearing words I don't know. Oh, uh, it's like a Jewish. Okay. But uh, who was like the? It's a Jewish word, so it doesn't count. Is it's that? like a Yiddish <laughs> word. Okay. Yeah. For like schitzing, like yeah. how like I am right yeah, now because like, I turned off the AC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like for Clemt is like emotional or whatever. What was that character that um, Mike Myers did on SNL? It's like the coffee talk. Coffee talk. Oh, okay. Yeah, she would say that a lot. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you uh, for sorry me. to keep you in you guys' spot. So, uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. Later, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Uh, I really enjoyed that conversation with Allison. I'm really happy she could uh, take the time to stop over to Bushwick and have a little chit chat. Uh, everyone, and please don't forget, uh, check out her new show, Questionable Choices, on July 23rd on the Music Choices channel. Okay? I mean, I don't know what, I don't know if I have Music Choices, but if you have Music Choices channel, find it, DVR it, check her out. Uh, all all the people on the show are people I'm friends with. Uh, Super Agarwal and Andre Thompson, Nick Callis. Definitely check them out. And don't forget, follow her on Twitter, at Allison Klemp, A-L-I-S-O-N-K-L-E-M-P. And while you're on there, you can follow me on Twitter, at the Billy Presida, uh, and, and say hello. Use the hashtag, Man Whore Podcast. Let me and Allison know what you thought about the show. Love seeing those tweets. Love them. And, uh, but if you don't have Twitter or you want to be a little more private, uh, you can email me at manwhorepod at gmail.com. Uh, do make sure you're subscribed to the Man Whore Podcast. If, if you're new to the show, you're just testing it out. Come on. You liked it. You enjoyed it. You know it. Click that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss an episode. And, uh, and if you can spare a, a few cents, a few dollars a month, It'd be really appreciative uh, if you go to patreon.com slash podcast and support this show on Patreon. Now, uh, now tonight I got I to gotta prepare. I got to go interview a feminist icon, Betty Dotson. I know you probably don't know who she is. That's because she was like, she's 85. So she, <laughs> she was out, she was all out doing her fem. She was out like changing female sexuality uh, when my parents were born. <laughs> so, I mean, if you don't know who she is, Google her. She's an amazing woman. Uh, I, am, I am gearing myself up for that interview today. And uh, you're going to hear that one next week. So uh, until, until then, everyone, you know, have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe. But don't forget, most importantly, you stay slutty.